Have you ever wondered what happens inside a volcano before it erupts? Imagine standing on the brink of a colossal mountain, the air heavy with anticipation. This is no ordinary mountain, but a volcano, a geological marvel that gives us a glimpse into the fiery heart of our planet. It's a breathtaking sight, with its towering peaks and a landscape that can oscillate between lush greenery and stark barren rock, depending on its activity. But what truly makes a volcano intriguing and, at times, terrifying isn't what's on the surface. The real magic happens beneath, where an intricate network of chambers and pathways hides beneath the tranquil facade. It's here that a tempest brews, a concoction of molten rock, gases and elements, all stewing in the Earth's heat. So let's delve beneath this serene surface, into the cauldron of fiery activity that is a volcano, to uncover the secrets it holds before it erupts. Beneath the Earth's crust, a dramatic process is unfolding. Deep inside the volcano, a simmering dance of heat and pressure is taking place. It's a spectacle that remains hidden from our sight, yet its effects are all too visible. This intense activity is sparked by the continuous shifting and sliding of tectonic plates beneath the Earth's surface. These movements cause friction, generating immense heat and pressure within the volcano. Imagine a pot of soup on the stove. Over time, as the heat increases, the soup begins to bubble. Similarly, the heat inside the volcano causes the rock to melt, forming a thick, viscous substance known as magma. This magma, much like the bubbles in our soup, begins to rise. Driven by the relentless force of the pressure, the magma embarks on a journey towards the surface, seeking an escape route. As the pressure increases, magma starts its journey towards the surface. The magma finds its way to a vast underground reservoir. This is what we call the magma chamber. Picture a colossal cavern, deep beneath the Earth's surface, filled to the brim with molten rock. It's a bit like an underground lake of fire, but instead of water, it's filled with magma. This magma is incredibly hot, often exceeding a thousand degrees Celsius, and it's under immense pressure, which gives it an enormous amount of potential energy. The magma chamber can be several kilometers in diameter, making it a vast and formidable force of nature. But its size isn't the only thing that's impressive. The energy contained within this chamber is truly staggering. It's this energy that ultimately drives a volcanic eruption, transforming the calm mountain above into a fiery spectacle of nature's power. This chamber holds an immense amount of energy waiting to be unleashed. As the magma rises, it encounters layers of rock and water. This isn't a casual meet and greet though. The intense heat from the magma forces the water trapped in these layers to undergo a dramatic change. You see, water has this fascinating ability to turn from a liquid into a gas when it's heated. So as the water heats up, it starts to evaporate, becoming steam. But that's not where the story ends. This steam doesn't just float away, no, it mixes right into the magma like sugar dissolving in a cup of hot tea. And just like that, we've got a new player in the game gas. This gas isn't like the air we breathe though. It's a potent mix of water vapor, carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, and other volatile substances. It's these gases that give magma its explosive potential. This steam mixes with the magma, creating a volatile mixture of gases. Trapped within the magma chamber, the gases start to exert immense pressure. This isn't your everyday pressure, though. Imagine shaking a soda can and feeling the tension build up inside. Now, multiply that feeling a thousandfold. That's the kind of pressure we're talking about. These gases, a cocktail of water vapor, carbon dioxide, and other volatile substances, are trapped within the viscous magma. As the magma continues to rise, the pressure from these gases also increases. It's a ticking time bomb, a subterranean soda can waiting to explode. With nowhere else to go, the gas pressure continues to build. It's a silent but powerful force, playing a crucial role in the impending eruption. It's like the calm before the storm, a deceptive silence that belies the chaos to come. The pressure builds until it reaches a breaking point. That's when things get explosive. Suddenly, the volcano erupts. Imagine a pressure cooker that's been left on the stove for far too long. The pressure, which has been building continuously, finally reaches its breaking point. 
the lid flies off, releasing everything inside with an incredible force. This is exactly what happens during a volcanic eruption. The intense pressure within the magma chamber becomes too much to contain. The magma, now transformed into a fiery blend of lava and gas, along with fragments of rock, bursts forth from the volcano's vent. It's a spectacle of nature's raw power, as this mix shoots up into the sky, reaching heights that can dwarf even the tallest skyscrapers. The energy released during this process is so immense it can be felt miles away. This explosive release of energy, this spectacular display of Earth's internal forces, is what we commonly refer to as a volcanic eruption. As the eruption subsides, lava flows down the sides of the volcano, leaving behind a trail of destruction. This lava, a testament to the raw power of Earth's inner workings, is not merely molten rock. It's a river of heated elements, a mix of silicon, oxygen, aluminum, iron, magnesium, calcium, sodium, potassium, phosphorus, and titanium. Each volcanic eruption is a reminder of the planet's ongoing evolution, a natural sculptor reshaping the Earth's crust one flow at a time. The lava's journey begins within the volcano's vent, where it has been churned and pressurized. Once the eruption occurs, this superheated material is free to begin its descent. As it flows, it follows the path of least resistance, creating new landscapes and altering existing ones. It's a destructive and creative force, all in one. The speed and direction of the lava flow are influenced by several factors. The steepness of the volcano's slope, the viscosity of the lava, and the amount of gas within it all play a role. Some lava moves slowly, crawling forward at a turtle's pace, while other flows race downhill like a river in flood. Lava's destructive force is undeniable. With temperatures exceeding 1,000 degrees Celsius, it incinerates everything it touches. Forests, homes, roads, nothing is safe from its path. Yet even in its destructive wake, life eventually finds a way to return. Over time, the cooled lava breaks down, forming a rich soil where plants take root and animals find a home. Its high temperature allows the lava to stay molten and fluid for a significant distance, creating a spectacle that is both terrifying and mesmerizing to observe. Its bright orange glow against the night sky is a sight that once seen is never forgotten. Eventually, the lava cools and solidifies, leaving behind a new layer of Earth's crust. It's a testament to the planet's continual process of creation and destruction, a cycle as old as Earth itself. The lava, reaching temperatures of over 1,000 degrees Celsius, melts everything in its path. After the eruption, the volcano enters a period of rest. This quiet phase is not a sign of the volcano's demise, but rather a period of rejuvenation. Just as a sprinter catches their breath after a race, so too does a volcano after an eruption. During this quiet phase, the volcano goes through a process of recovery. The empty magma chamber starts to refill, like a reservoir collecting water after a drought. This magma, sourced from deep within the earth, begins to accumulate, slowly and steadily filling the chamber once again. But this refill isn't just a simple matter of topping off. No, it's a complicated process driven by the shifting of tectonic plates and the relentless heat of the earth's core. This heat melts the surrounding rock, creating new magma that seeps into the chamber. While the magma chamber is replenishing, the volcano above ground is also undergoing changes. The lava that once flowed freely down the volcano's sides has now cooled and hardened. This hardened lava, or igneous rock, adds a new layer to the volcano's structure, making it even more formidable. In a way, the volcano is rebuilding its energy reserves, much like a bear hibernating for the winter. It's storing up for the next eruption, which could be decades, centuries, or even millennia away. This is the cyclical nature of volcanoes, a period of explosive activity followed by a period of rest and recovery. And let's not forget the impact of these eruptions on the surrounding environment. While the immediate aftermath may appear devastating over time, the volcanic material enriches the soil, leading to fertile lands and lush vegetation. It's a testament to the resilience of nature, turning destruction into creation. As we can see, volcanoes are not just about eruptions. They are dynamic, living systems, constantly evolving and changing. 
Each eruption is but a chapter in a volcano's long and storied life, a life characterized by periods of intense activity and periods of rest. This cycle of eruption and rest is a natural part of the volcanic process.